All right, welcome in. I'm Brian Edwards of MajorWager.com, and we're going to talk the 2019 Vanderbilt Commodores today as Derek Mason heads into his sixth season uh, of his tenure. He has taken the Commodores to a pair of bowl games, and uh, last year they finished six and seven straight up, eight and five against the spread, but they were really, really close to having a big year, had no business at all losing at Notre Dame 22 to 17. They had out yarded uh, the Fighting Irish 420 to 380 in that game. They had a, uh, a first down pickup uh, down to the one yard line that would have set up a first and goal. And uh, I'm pretty sure it was Jared Pinckney. Uh, he had it ripped loose. And then Kari Blassengame, who's now departed the senior running back, had a great chance to recover it in the end zone all alone by himself. And he kind of had a running start, dives on it, can't handle it. Notre Dame gets it for a touchback. Vandy also missed a mid-range field goal in the third quarter of that game. I want to say it was around you know, 30 to 35 yards. And then on their uh, potential game-winning drive, which had they made that field goal earlier, they would just have needed field goal range, and they were in field goal range, uh, but they trailed by five uh, because they had missed the field goal. Uh, they had three drop passes where Kyle Shermer put it right on the numbers, but uh, unable uh, to come up with the key catches, and they lose at Notre Dame in a game they shouldn't have lost. Now at Missouri, they led nearly the entire game. Ended up, Missouri came back with Drew Locke late in, in the final couple minutes and won 33-28. Uh, they were up 21-3 to on Florida uh, when Keyshawn, and Keyshawn Vaughn was destroying Florida. Had around almost 200 yards from scrimmage in just a quarter and maybe a possession or two. And Vandy was up 21-3. to Vaughn gets hurt, and then the Gators come back, and they get a late field goal with like 10 seconds left to cover as a nine, nine and a half point favorite, and they win 37 27. Now, when Vaughn got hurt, he had to miss the Kentucky game the next week, and they lost 14 to 7 to Kentucky. Is Keyshawn Vaughn worth more than seven points of offense to Vandy? You damn right he is. They would have won that Kentucky game. And um, what was the other close game they had that they, oh, the bowl game against Baylor, which I lost big on. I had Vandy there. I did have the over also, but for less, uh, they lose a shootout. With Vandy. So what is to like about the Commodores in 2019? Okay, seven starters returning on offense, five on defense, but they've got an influx of transfers that I think can make an impact. But let's start with the three main reasons why you have to like the 2019 Commodores, and that is the three guys that could have turned pro, but they came back. Collegia Lipscomb, the wide receiver, he led the SEC in receptions last year with 87, had 916 yards, nine touchdowns. Jared Pinckney, um, and I'm hoping that was him that fumbled on the uh, Notre Dame one-yard line because I uh, would hate to, because he's a great player, and I, I would hate to have identified him as the one that fumbled if he didn't. But uh, one of the best tight ends in the country, uh, 50 receptions, 774 yards, and seven touchdowns last season. And then the running back, Key Sean Vaughn, the transfer from Illinois. He was a Nashville native, started nine games last year, ran for 1,244 yards, 12 touchdowns, 7.9 yards per carry behind a Vandy offensive line. Can you imagine? 7.9 yards per carry. That's incredible. They also have the rising sophomore as a freshman last year, C.J. Bowler, 34 catches, 440 yards, and two touchdowns. And Vaughn also had 13 receptions for 170 yards and two touchdowns. Okay, the transfers on offense that I think can uh, have an impact, uh, let's first talk about the Harvard transfer, Justin Shelton Mosley. He is a wide receiver but he's also a factor on special teams at Harvard. He had three re uh, re returns. I don't, uh, I don't know that was specified punting or kicking, but three uh, returns on special teams of 85 yards or more that went for touchdowns. And he also had 148 catches, 921 receiving yards in 32 games at Harvard. And he was an FCS All-American in 2017, but last year had his season cut short with injury. Now, 
What do you do? You lose Shermer. 24 to 6 TDI and T ratio and victimized by a lot of drops last year. Shermer, Shermer was so incredible for Vandy. He broke all of Jay Cutler's records. And now they get Riley Neal, the Ball State transfer, who started 32 games, 60% completion percentage, 7,393 career uh, passing yards, a 46 to 25 TDI and T ratio. And perhaps most importantly, because you might have to scramble behind a Vandy O-line in SEC games. He has 1,363 career rushing yards and 15 touchdowns. Um, now let's go to the defense. And uh, we've got uh, two Power 5 transfers coming in to start at the cornerback positions. Dante Carrier-Williams who started five games for Wisconsin in 2017 on a defense that gave up only 13.9 points per game. And then they also have Cam Watkins, a grad transfer from Illinois, who started 16 games over the last couple of years. They brought in a Juco transfer in Brandon Maddox, who's going to start at uh, defensive tackle. He was in for the spring. And they've also... Uh, They've got a couple of solid players in Dayo Odeyingbo. I hope I got that right. I have no idea. And they've got a transfer from Marist and Eddie Zinn Turner, a defensive tackle who has 121 tackles and six starts. I'm sorry, uh, in 20 starts and six sacks while he was at Marist, obviously at FCS school, from 15 to 18. All right, Vandy season win total. It's five. It's shaded to the over, minus 150. If you like the under, it's a plus 110 return. Now, no games of the year listed, at least not at five dimes for Vandy, except for the UNLV game. The UNLV game, Vandy is a 16-point favorite. But let me warn you, during Derek Mason's tenure, they have uh, Vandy's been a double-digit favorite nine times, and they are two and seven against the spread. A couple other tidbits on Vandy. 14 and 8 against the spread in 22 games as a double digit underdog during Mason's tenure, which is going into its sixth year. Again, I'll point that out. Um, Vandy has won outright in nine consecutive non conference home games. They're 6 and 3 against the spread in those games, but the games that they did not cover, they were favored by 28, 50, and 47, which gets back to the double digit chalk spots I alluded to as a road underdog under Mason Vandy 13 and 11 to the number and after going six and one against the spread as a home underdog in 2015 and 16 Vandy has limped to a one in five ATS mark in its last six as a home underdog you look at the schedule they open with Georgia that's actually another line game obviously the opener uh, around 20 and a half points at last look uh, they'll lose that game at Purdue in week two. Got to deal with Rondale Moore, but I think they've got a good chance in that game. I initially marked Vandy three and four with five swing games at Purdue being one of them. Right now, I'm thinking they will win that game. Then they get two weeks to prepare for LSU, but game three is LSU September 21st at home, but I think they lose that. I think they beat Northern Illinois at home. I will point out that the Huskies have two weeks to prepare, and Vandy's coming off the LSU game. Then they're at Ole Miss. I think they will win that game. Then UNLV at home, I think they'll win. Missouri at home being a swing game. At South Carolina, I believe, is a loss, although Vandy gets two weeks to pre prepare for that spot. I think they lose at Florida. I think that I marked Kentucky a swing game, but I think they're going to win that one. East Tennessee State at home, a win. At Tennessee, I think they win that. And why do I say that? Because Vandy has pimp slapped the Vols three years in a row, beating the closing number by 59 and a half points and winning by double digits in each spot. So I think they get three of those swing games. I think they get at Purdue. I think they get at Ole Miss and at Tennessee, but I think they'll lose... Well, actually, I think they'll get Kentucky at home, too. Probably lose to Missouri at home, but not, you know, it could happen. Look, if the total being five over minus 150, if it was five and a half and less juice, I'd probably get a small taste of the over. I lean to the over, but I don't recommend um, 
over five at a minus 150 price. That's, I'm not that confident in it to lay minus 150 juice. Okay, I'm Brian Edwards, MajorWager.com, and you are caught up your preview of the 2019 Vanderbilt Commodores. Over and out.